Now they may or may not know. I like compact pistols and traditional guns. So for today... So yes, two pistols, traditional, subcompact. Both good guns. This I have actually used before quite a while ago. I don't know if they've made a newer version, but this one seems to be doing what me well so far. And this is a long sought after piece for me. I've seen the HFC one. I do like it. CO2 I find is much better in Ireland than green gas, which is what these two are. But the main thing that killed it for me is A, the magazine is very bulbous, doesn't really, it looks weird on the, K, on the KWC one. And the other thing is that the bolt does not stay open on it. Those are two things that killed me because as a gas gun user, as I will now, just for the next few seconds, scroll through the list of all the gas guns I've used. That should be it. Having the bolt lock open on a gas gun is a lot more important than it would be an electric gun. Mainly because gas costs money. And if you're wasting gas in empty shots without realising it, especially if it's, if it's dim or if you're indoors and you don't know if it's hitting off anything, or if you're outdoors and let's say you're using darker BBs because you're using a, like a gas sniper or whatever, not knowing when you're empty sucks. So that's why I went for the WE one for this pistol. And this has always been a nice subcompact. I like small pistols. I have big hands. And just having something that fits just like that for me is important. Because I just find it more comfortable than, than holding a modern, really long pistol. I don't mind the traditional ones because, well, they didn't really have any better ones back then that were really worth a damn. Thus why this big old honking beast came along. But interestingly, this is not actually based off the German version. This is the Chinese version. Mauser, the C96 was the original one. That was semi-auto only. Did not have a detachable magazine. Fed by clips through the top. So you would lock it open like this, put a stripper clip in, push the BBs down, and off you go. During the late 1920s, early 1930s, when the Chinese Civil War started becoming more and more of a thing, the Spanish was actually one of the big ones. The Astra, I believe that was Spanish anyway, started creating C96s in fully automatic. And in China, there was always a big market for these pistols because the different loopholes in the laws, pistols weren't counted as military firearms, they could be imported, but you could have the stock with them, which basically made them carbines. And so you can actually find a lot of real world fake copies of this gun. Which is why when Mauser finally decided, wait a minute, these fake companies are actually making more money because they're making an automatic version of our gun. Let's make an automatic version of our own gun so we can make more money. And so they were imported into China. And you can see sort of Chinese, I think that's the Chinese basically Ministry of Defense symbol and some other markings on this side. Which, from what the amount of research I've done, are fairly accurate. It was also why you don't find a box on this side with Mauser. So, first off, I am going to review C96 and then move on to the WE PX4 Bulldog. So, the WE M712 is pretty much exactly what you expect from a 7.12. It is C96 with full automatic fire. Again, this is green gas. So I'm going to quickly fill it. Yeah, so it has a 20 round box magazine. Slap it in. Drives up ready to go. And interesting on this one, this was before slides were really a thing. So you're thinking, oh, where's the where's like the bolt release or the slide release? There is none. When you're finished with it, when it's empty, you have to pop the magazine out and do that to drop it and then pull the trigger. If you want to dry fire this gun, 
you have to put in a very special piece. And that piece is this little bit of metal here. You want the U-shape pointing up. You struggle to put the spring down because your hands are cold. You try desperately to slide the, the piece in. Two hours later. Because you want to dry fire it, it happens to fall in through pure chance. And then, ready to dry fire. So, in. Like I said, the main change was the fact this is a select fire weapon. So, one is single shot. And 20 is automatic. And this is your safety. As you can see, the, it kind of makes a gap between the hammer and what would be the firing pin at the back. There is sort of a gas firing pin in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Again, those are the real control, all real controls you'll be using on this gun, apart from the magazine release. Again, everything metal. You do have a adjustable rear sight for height, no windage. It's marked for 50 to 1,000 meters. If you're airsofting to 1,000 meters with this pistol, you are a better man than I, Gungadin. in. So, again, let's just see it shoot in semi-automatic. Again, no BBs, so it's fine. This is semi. So it's a fairly strong kick. I do have to say though, this is really impressing me in terms of gas efficiency. When I first went into SG Airsoft to pick this up, it was cold. It was freaking cold. And it still went through a magazine, full auto, like a dump, with a ma uh, full magazine dump, with no flaws. Um, I was told that there may be one or two venting issues, but I haven't come across those yet. So, again, that was single fire. Now you push this button in, that's something that most people don't actually, not most people, but some people don't actually get. You have to push that button in, and then rotate it around. Still has a lot of the factory grease in it, that's fine with me. And then you have automatic. Now this rate of fire is quite impressive. So that was fun. Having a full auto gun that fires reliably, especially gas, is a pain. And if you look through my list, there are one or two gas guns that are capable of full auto that have been a pain. Gas doesn't do well in Ireland in winter full auto. That's just a fact. This handles a magazine full auto like a champ, and that's all I ask of it. So, later on, you'll be seeing the actual shooting test of it. It's going to be pitch black outside because of the evening. And I figure you might actually see the BBs better if I have a strong light from behind me and see the BBs fly through the air as opposed to the dull winter sun where the BBs can just be lost in, in the light. So some night shooting will happen in a minute. But next is the WEPX4. Yes, so the WEPX4 Bulldog version. Now there is the ordinary PX4. I'm not sure if there's a PX or a short. I thought I heard rumors of it. I haven't seen it myself. This is the subcompact version. A lot of people like the PX4 because it has the rotating breech that it sort of rotates around, locks in, and so in the real steel it makes a better gas seal, reduces recoil, all that jazz. Again, airsoft doesn't matter. The only thing you need is a good gas seal, and that's all down to the uh, down to the nozzle and the hop up in there. So it doesn't matter if this spins, if it makes your T, if it does anything else apart from just work. So, main features of this gun that I like. One, it has little grooves in there, my right finger and thumb. That's where I like that's how I like to hold a gun like this. That is perfect for me. It is really, really comfortable. And comfort is one of the main things about this gun. It is a super comfortable gun. Partly because of these little digits here. So yes, sorry, my phone became full of memory, so I had to clear it all out onto the laptop, and then continue. 
As I was saying before, the main reason why I got this gun is because it is exceedingly comfortable. Because of these so-called digits here. See the back grip of the gun? With a little bit of brute force and pressing the button there, pops off. And you can swap it depending on what hand size you have. And yes, it does come in whatever color the bottom part of the receiver is. This one's tan, it also comes in black. And it comes with pink. I find pink might be the one I use because people say, why do you use pink? And I just say, why not? So let me just quickly pop them off. That is, you can kind of just see if you can see it inside. Come on, camera, focus. Focus. Stay on target. Okay, now it's hard. Uh, you might be able to see it there. Little M in the center there. Little S there. There you go. A little bit clearer than S there. That tells you what size grip you're putting on. You're putting it on. You just pop straight in, and off you go. Again, controls are. Pretty much the exact same as normal Beretta, seeing as these guns are made by Beretta. You have your ambidextrous safety here, which is also a decocker, which does actually decock safely. And that's something I also like, because guns on safe in the, in the safe zone or whatever, throw it on, decocks it, you don't have to worry about it, it's fine. There is your slide catch. Nice, big, accessible not too in the way, mag release, and your disassembly lever. I will quickly disassemble both guns after the shooting test, but mainly it's this gun is a very nice to use gun. It is threaded for a suppressor. I don't know why you put a suppressor in a subcompact, because all points of being subcompact. Suppressor would not make would make it no longer subcompact. And I again most of these guns I've used indoors. I used to play outdoors more, but I'm more an indoor thing lately, especially with the lower power level in Ireland, indoor is a bit more feasible. A small pistol is super handy. The one downside, it's super heavy. It's actually heavier than the M712. And I'll compare sizes now. With the long mag, no, what I'll do is both magazines out side by side. These are your two guns, and somehow this is heavier than this. This is just so I know the metal is what metal they used, if it's just denser. I have no idea. This is super heavy. It's nice. It makes it feel like it's more real steel. But when you're just comparing it size-wise, a lot of people would say, what's the point in carrying this tiny elk that's heavy? We can have one of these that's lighter. And it's, it's just convenience. Like this I can throw into any old, pretty much any old pocket in my uniform or any old pouch and it's there ready. Good luck trying to get a nice black tactical holster for this thing. Unless you go for an SMG holster. But even then those things are horrendously big and just get them. So, yes, apologies for that. Same thing happened. But this will be the end of the mini talking bit. Now we're going to go to the shooting bit where I'll shoot both guns with light behind. So hopefully you can see where the BBs travel to. Um, a little bit of slow motion as well. I know. Some people like slow motions, some people don't, but I do, so there you go. So, out to the garden. So, before I start shooting, I'll let you know that I did manage to find some uh, some tracer babies. I'm going to run across the light here to show you. Let's get a little bit more of the light in there to show you, show you a bit less terribly. There you go. Some nice glowing babies would help you out. So, let's get shooting.
So yes, that was a shooting portion of the video. I apologise that you couldn't see the boobies that well travelling down. It will, I was hoping that me giving a bit of traces a bit of light before shooting would make it easier to see, but apparently not. But, like I said before, I want to give you a quick sort of field strip of these. And funnily enough, on the real M712, not sure about the... No real C96, not sure about this M712, that to disassemble one of these, there was no screws. The only screw in the gun was to hold the grips in. These grips are plastic, but everything else is nice and metal. So there's a little tab here, which you, which you push up, and then... Three hours later. Should be able to just slip it out. And so pretty much all of the gun is up there. That is literally only the the trigger and the selector switch where you can see it moves the sear there. And the top has everything else. To put it back together, you just line up two rails there and push it all back in. The hop up is the little, little flathead screw at the very, very top there. That is your hop up adjustment. Just turn that depending on which way you want to move it to. I was shooting inside the two fives, it seems pretty dead on, so I want to leave it at that. As for the bulldog, cock it, turn the lever down, pull it out, slide forward about halfway, and it pops off. Standard, standard GBB pistol, the little hop up wheel is there. Then you just turn it counterclockwise for hop up up, and I put it back together. Put it back along the rails. Put it back and lock the slide up. And now what I actually find easier is you turn this back before you have to wiggle it around a bit. There you go. And it goes in. Because you try to push it and normally it kind of gets caught. But there you go. So yes, this does come with a stock. It only comes with one magazine. You can't get smaller magazines, 10 round magazines. This one comes with a small, I think 15 round, and a 20 round magazine, plus a little grip extender for the longer magazines so you aren't kept holding a magazine in between, sort of there. It actually comes with extra rubberized grip. So that's really the quick rundown of the two guns. I'll post a link for both of them in SGRsoft down in the description below. Actually, I might put an annotation here and here for the respective guns. So thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll be able to do more videos for you soon. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, and as a side note, I've been using the stock as a camera base for the video. Works well. Although, if you do put a gun on it, it's a fairly nice club, isn't it?